How's it going everybody? Welcome back to my C++ programming series. Today we are looking at uh, dynamic two-dimensional arrays. Um, now there are a couple of different ways you can create uh, dynamic multi-dimensional arrays. And one way here we have this first example. We have um, basically an, a pointer variable called board and this will create an array of four pointer of the pointers where uh, each pointer is of type int and now because board 0, 1, 2, and 3 are pointers you can use these pointers to create the new rows of board. Now suppose that each row of board has six columns so then basically this for loop here will uh, create the, uh, the, the array. The new int 6 here creates an array of six components of type int and returns the base address of the array. Uh, the assignment statement then stores the returned address into row, which is right here. So that would be the first row, of zero um, of six new integers, and then so on and so forth. So after the execution of, the, of this loop here, uh, board is a two-dimensional array of four rows and six columns. Now if you replaced the six with the number 10, uh, the loop will create a two-dimensional array of four rows and ten columns. Um, so basically, in other words, the number of columns of board can be specified during execution. However, the way this board is declared, um, the number of rows is fixed, so in reality, board is not really a true dynamic two-dimensional array. So if you consider this statement here, you can see this declares board to be a pointer to a pointer. Now, in other words, board Board, just board here and then board with a star are pointers. Now board can store the address of a pointer or an array of pointer of type int and the star board can store an address of type int into a uh, memory space or an array of integer variables. Suppose that you wanted board to be an array of 10 rows and 15 columns. Well, to accomplish this, first we create an array of 10 pointers of type int, which is what we do here, and assign the address of that array to board. <clears throat> then we will create the columns of the board using basically the, uh, in the same manner we did here. However, we have the pointer, the new integer pointer of uh, 10 being assigned to board. It's, it's dereferenced here. Uh, now, to access the components of board, you can use the array subscripting notation, um, such as the, uh, the the brackets there, the square brackets. But also note that the number of rows and the number of columns of board can be specified during program execution as well. We did not really technically do that in the first two examples. So what I'm going to do is comment this out real quick. Okay. Here, this is what we're going to do. We have two functions here. Notice our um, pointer to a pointer board of type int, and then we also have two uh, just regular integer variables, rows and columns. Now, in our our uh, function prototypes, we have we're using the pointer to a pointer integer variable and the other two integers as well, and we're also going to use them in print. Um, let's take a look at the functions here. Fill which basically takes the pointer to a pointer. We name it P here as the uh, formal parameter. And then row size and column size. Here we are going to, for each row, prompt the user to enter however many numbers for the row number, row, whatever row we're on. We're going to store that information into the, the pointer, make it look pretty here. And then the print basically will just print the array using, again, the pointer to the pointer. <clears throat> so back in the main program, after we have our declarations, we prompt the user to enter the number of rows and columns, store those numbers in rows and columns. Then we create a new board, again, with the uh, pointer, the integer pointer of rows whatever number they entered, which will create the rows of board. And then we use that variable in the for loop and then assign the columns here to create the columns, 
with new int into the the row of the board and then of course we're going to call our fill function we're going to um, just fill all of the elements of the array and then we're going to print them and this is really cool to use because again um, with large data sets you really never know um, the size of data you're working with so let's go ahead and run this okay enter the number of rows and columns let's do a three by three three and three enter three numbers for row zero we'll go one two three enter three numbers for row one which is technically the second row so four five six and three numbers for row two seven eight and nine and then we'll be left with one through nine <clears throat> now we're we get the output because we're using set width which I cover um, early on in my series so again you know if you wanted to use <clears throat> a larger size we can go um, oh, 2 by 5 enter 5 numbers for row 0 so technically the first row 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 and there you have um, dynamic two-dimensional arrays and you can also uh, use three-dimensional arrays just to add another um, another output for loop in this in this for loop here for um, the z-axis and basically you would look at it as a z-axis but in computer memory it's all going to be one contiguous block of memory um, so that's uh, all we're going to cover for today I want to thank you guys for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you for my next video.